Hey, what's up YouTube? You are watching Ready, Set, Drone, and today I have the 4K Bugs 20 EIS, and we're gonna check it out, so stay tuned. So first of all, I wanna say the Bugs line of drones is amazing. I've had several different types of Bugs drones from the Bugs 3, the original one that I first got, uh, the Bugs 5, the Bugs 8 and 6, which are both FPV drones, and now the Bugs 20 EIS. Um, they make a, what I would call a high-end um, toy drone. Now, maybe this is even more than a high-end toy drone. I don't know, I haven't flown it yet, but this one is supposed to have 4K, and I'm guessing the EIS stands for Electronic Image Stabilization, which it claims to have on the box. Okay, I got my double A's in here. I'm gonna go ahead and close this up, and let's see. Looks like the on off switch is over here on the side and you get this nice little LCD display. Check this out. Oh yeah. So let me go ahead and see if I can connect to the drone via the app. So I will go into my Wi-Fi. All right, and there's my live view of the camera. Camera tilt is right here. Camera tilting down, camera tilting up. Pretty smooth. I think I'm all ready, so I just need to put the props on. Let me turn it off and let's see how difficult that is actually to do. And there are four little caps here and it does come with a spare set of these. And it does come with instructions on how to uh, put the props on. And there's an A prop and a B prop. So that's a B prop. And that's a B prop. So it's gonna go diagonally. And that is a B prop, so we don't need that. That is a B prop. So these must be A's left over. That's an A, and that's an A. And they do have a little uh, tiny, tiny, you really can't see it very well, but there's a little tiny marking that says A or B. Yeah, I mean, quick release is just such a standard these days, um, but um, I haven't had to do this in a while, so hopefully I won't break any props and have to change them out in the field. But they do give you a screwdriver to do that with. You do want to get these down. Don't don't over tighten them and strip them, of course, but tighten them enough so that they're they feel pretty pretty good in there, pretty tight. Okay, got the four props on, and the app is downloaded onto my phone. So we got that. We've got battery in the remote control. Uh, we've got the batteries charged. The two batteries again. Thank you for including two batteries. And uh, I think we're ready to go. So let's go out and uh, give it a test. Okay, so the Bugs 20 EIS is all set up. Uh, I've got the app downloaded. I've got the batteries charged. Everything's ready to go. So we're gonna take it up for a flight. Now, one thing that's really important with these drones is to make sure that you calibrate the compass. I did that in the app already. I might go ahead and just do it again to demonstrate. But as I said before, I really like the fact that this comes with two batteries instead of one. So I've got one battery right here. Go ahead and slip that guy in. So now I can see right now that I have um, a full battery on the remote and the quad is not on yet, so I'm gonna turn it on. Okay, quad is on. And now I can see on the remote that I have full battery on the remote and the drone. Currently it has zero satellites and a full battery. I'm gonna go ahead and put the phone in the phone holder. Now this is a little tricky and I'm not a big fan of how this is designed. These two little things that come out here on the bottom are just designed to, for holders, you know, they're for your hands to be able to hold it. The top is where the, cam or where the um, phone goes. So you go to your Wi-Fi on the phone, you'll see a drone something, 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 that's the, the right Wi-Fi. And then you're gonna go to your um, uh, app itself, which is this, this guy here. And then 
for the phone holder, as I said, it's a little tricky and not great the way it goes. You want to pull this piece up and then you have to actually kind of, once it's all the way up, be careful not to push buttons on the remote because you can easily do that. Um, you've got to kind of angle it upward a little bit, which feels like you're going to break it, but that's what it's supposed to do. There we go. It has to be all the way up for you to get this little bit of angle. So now I've got this little bit of angle. There's a little flap that pops out here on the bottom, which is right there. And then your phone goes in here in that flap. Now the trick is, first of all, you can't have a case on your phone. And second of all, um, you wanna make sure that you're not accidentally pushing buttons on your phone. When I first did this, I was actually pushing my volume button on the phone and it was causing it to mess up. So now it's not connected via wire, it's connected via Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit start on here and next. And then it's gonna show me how many satellites I have, which is currently 12 a bunch of information about where I am and such. You hit this click button, and now you see I have, uh, it says geomagnetism calibration. Now, interestingly, to calibrate the compass, you hit this little um, envelope up here in the top left. The envelope is where your messages are, and it's telling you, hey, you need to calibrate the compass. So I'm gonna set this down, pick it up, give it a spin until it feels good. Then I'm gonna turn it upward, Give it another spin until it stops telling me to spin it. Okay, so it's the compass should be good now. You'll also note too, there is a, the SD slot, the micro SD slot is right here in the front of the thing right above the camera. One thing I like about this guy, it's really easy to put the SD card in. It may be detrimental that the SD card may pop out easily too. You know, sometimes the harder it is to get in, the harder it is to get out kind of thing. But it is real easy. It just has a spring and you don't have to have uh, super-sized fingernails to get this SD card in and out. This camera is supposed to do 4K at 30. And the actual 4K resolution is 3840 by 2160. It has EIS, which is electronic image stabilization. So I've got it here. I'm going to go ahead and hit record. And I'm going to go ahead and unlock the props. I'm gonna go ahead and take off. And it's drifting in the wind. Now it's supposed to have 16 satellites, so let's see. And I am in GPS mode. It is still drifting, let me give it a second. Okay, now it's kind of settled into, into place. I like, which is similar to DJI drones, is it has four LEDs on the back battery that tell you the current status of your battery. So right now this has four LEDs lit up, which is telling me the battery is, you know, somewhere between 75 and 100%. Um, you also get indicators up here on the top of the screen as to what the battery level is. So the GPS seems to be holding pretty well. I'm gonna do a little uh, yawing of it, and it's drifting a little bit as it yaws, but it's still kind of staying in the same general area. Now I'm gonna just, uh, gently fly it out into the field. So this is in sport mode. There's full speed in sport mode. And so far I've got a pretty clear signal. I've got, I've got a clear view of, of what's going on. Now, I think you can uh, tilt the camera up and down. Whoa, it does not have the brakes that a GPS or a DJI drone has. So I came in a little hot there and luckily started stopping soon enough that I could avoid the tree. Here it is right here. So let me see if I can tilt the camera. Yep, there we go. Camera tilt is right here, up and down. So if I wanna go like up above Vinny and tilt down on him to see him, there he is. That's cool. Tilt back up. And it flies, it flies very easy. But as I said, when you let go of the stick, it takes it a few yards, meters, feet, whatever you want to say, for it to stop. It does not, does not just like throw on the brakes like some other drones do. So again, I'll bring it in and I'll hit stop here. I'll let go of the stick. And it, it does stop pretty decently fast, but not, again, you're gonna to have to have a little extra, little extra time. See, I've got, sounds, looks like I've still got three quarters of a battery. I'm gonna take it up pretty high, so, 
Right now it says my height is, it's all in meters, so 14 meters. So I'm gonna get up to about 100 meters, which is gonna be about 300 feet. You can see the horizon line is off just a little bit, and I think that's because um, it's fighting some wind up there. It's a bit windy today. Not, not super windy, but a bit windy. So it's at 105 meters, and it seems to be holding in place. It's got 19 satellites, 106 meters in the air. Distance is three meters, so it's pretty close to me. It's just right overhead. I can see it straight up there. It's very visible in the sky too, which is nice. Uh, it's in mode two. And uh, so let's just uh, truck it around up in the sky a little bit. We're going forward, yeah. Yeah, it's doing just fine in this wind. I'm bringing it down a little lower. Now I'm, I'm losing signal. Oh, now it says no signal. Now it says sport. Um, yeah, so it's still pretty close. It's um, 74 meters, so about 210 feet away from me and uh, 90 meters, about 300 feet in the air, and it's having trouble with the signal. So I'm gonna bring it back down. It is holding in place though, and as I bring it down and it gets back into signal range, um, it seems to clear up the stuttering on the video. And again, full stick down, it comes down pretty slowly. So if you have it high and you wanna get it down quickly, uh, you're gonna, you're gonna have to wait because it takes a little while. There we are, uh, Vinny and I. Now, I, I do wanna try out these lights on the bottom of it. It's supposed to have some lights under it. So let's bring it over here in the shade. Lights on, lights off, lights on. So yeah, and then when you hold the button down for a couple of seconds, that's when you change rate. So now I'm in tripod mode. So in tripod mode, that's about as fast as it goes. I'm going full speed to the left, and it's now I'll go full speed forward. It's a lot slower. As a matter of fact, it might not even be able to fight this breeze in tripod mode coming back. We'll see. Let's see if it compensates for that. And the yaw rate is pretty slow too. Oh yeah, it's it's making it. It's coming against the breeze. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, slow down there, buddy. There are also a variety of um, shots it can do, um, which I guess I could try. I'll try the, um, it has, it has uh, headless, orbit, and follow me, which I'm kind of glad it doesn't have too many. Like those shots are always a little iffy on these um, more low-end drones, whether they're gonna work or not but um, those three are pretty solid. So let's try the headless mode real quick and see how it does. And then we'll try the orbit and the follow me as well. Uh, so I'll go ahead and unlock the motors, take off. I'm gonna put it in headless mode, swipe to enter headless mode. So now if I push the stick away from me and I rotate the yaw at the same time, it's gonna just keep going away from me while it rotates. So I'm gonna go ahead and push the stick left in headless mode and push the, um, push the yaw right. And you're gonna see it's, it's going in a straight line and yet it's rotating as it goes. So that is what headless mode does. It basically makes left always left, right always right, forward always forward, and backwards always backwards. When you're not in headless mode, it can get a little confusing because sometimes if the drone is facing towards you, everything's backwards. So I'm gonna bring it back over here. I'm gonna take it out of headless mode and I'm gonna try follow me. So for follow me, I'm gonna flip this camera around. All right. All right, now I'm in follow me mode. I had to take it out of tripod mode in order to get in follow me. So follow me. Not in any walking. And I don't want to get out of range of audio, so I'm gonna come over here. Oh, now it's going backwards, but it's going towards trees, so I don't want that, so I'm gonna go this way.
Okay. Well, it did, it did follow me pretty well. I'm gonna take it out of follow me mode. I'm gonna bring it closer to me and a little higher. And now I'm gonna try orbit. So let me aim down the camera a bit more and go into orbit flight. And it should be, should be higher than the road. It shouldn't be going over the road. So it's kind of just orbiting from where it was. Oh, the lights are on, I just turned them off. All right, we'll get out of orbit mode for a second. Bring it down. I'm gonna try orbiting it over here, a little closer to me, and see if I can get myself in the shot a little better. Okay, so there I am in the shot, pretty much centered up. So we'll go into orbit mode and see if it does it. And it doesn't really orbit me. It seems to just kind of orbit from base, based on where it started, but not really on a subject. All right, I'm gonna go back into follow me one more time and walk back over to uh, where I was. definitely following me and I am not uh, pushing any buttons or any levers it's just doing it on its own okay I'm getting a low battery warning good timing uh, I've still got it in headless mode I think nope uh, take it out of follow me all right here we go I'm gonna bring it in for a landing All right, so as has been my experience with pretty much all the Bugs drones, this one is solid. This is definitely not going to compete with a Mavic or a Phantom uh, or even a, even a Mavic Mini, really, in terms of its um, stability in the air and its user friendliness. But for the price and for this level of drone without a uh, gimbal on it, this is actually a pretty solid contender. I'll tell you the things I don't like about it first. First of all, I'm not a big fan of how the phone goes onto the remote control. That is sort of problematic. It's difficult to get on there with these antennas and it doesn't feel like it's very solid. You could easily drop your phone. I also would say it's a little lacking in its uh, sport mode. It's, it's pretty much like regular mode for most drones, so I wouldn't call it a sport mode. Um, but tripod mode is very slow and the sport mode is just like regular, but you're not gonna be able to fly this thing very fast. And then finally, the range on it is not that great. It's, um, you know, I had it about 300 feet away or 100 meters, 100 yards, and it started losing signal. So you don't expect to fly this very far. You're gonna have to stay close. But the upsides of this guy are many. Uh, number one, the GPS is pretty solid. It had 17, 19 satellites while we were flying and it stayed really well in a decent amount of breeze out here today. Uh, number two, it comes with two batteries, which I always appreciate when they give you two batteries. Number three, the batteries have a uh, USB charger on them. You don't need a special battery charger. You literally can plug them in and charge them via USB. Uh, another thing is they have the little light indicator on the back, which tells you just, you can glance at it and see how much charge in, there is in the battery while it's flying. The battery has to be turned on for that to work though. Uh, the lights on the bottom are great. I think the camera quality is so-so. This is not gonna compete with a higher end uh, camera, but it's okay. It's not, not too bad for, for what it is. And then finally, the uh, flight modes, follow me, headless mode, and orbit all worked decently. Follow me worked really well. Uh, headless mode worked really well. The orbit is a little iffy. Um, 
If you've already flown a Mavic or a Mavic Pro, don't expect this to compete with, with one of those drones uh, in terms of its flyability. But if you're just starting out and you're wanting something fairly inexpensive that will get decent shots, not great shots, but decent shots, and comes with two batteries and is pretty easy to get set up and flying, I think this is a great little uh, uh, drone, just like so many of the Bugs drones. Bugs does fit in that sweet spot between the really cheap and not so great toys and the higher end DJI and say Autel drones. It's really right in there in the, the level where they're pretty affordable, they're fairly well made, and they're fun to fly. And so if you're looking for something in that range, I'd say this is a great one to check out. I've got a link in the description for it. Love to hear your comments about this drone. Uh, comment down below. And thanks again. Really appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time on Ready, Set, Drone.